Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In this video, I want to show you some results running Stable Diffusion XL on a Raja Rock 5A with the Rock chip RK3588S. So I already tested Stable Diffusion XL on a Raspberry Pi 4, and that's also that I noticed that it looked like as if it has the tendency to limit the amount of colors in the picture. But since generating an image with Stable Diffusion XL takes several hours on a Raspberry Pi 4, that's why I did some more tests with the Rockchip RK3588S, because uh, on the Rockchip it will take roughly around half an hour to generate an image. So here you have uh, the GitHub source for Onextreme by Vito Plantamura. And he has an explanation on yeah, how it is possible to run Stable Diffusion XL even on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Uh, so that means that probably any uh, single board computer with 300 MB of RAM, so let's just say 512 MB of RAM, uh, and with ARM, I'm guessing A55 efficiency cores, uh, that you can generate an image in around 11 hours. So on my Raspberry Pi 4, it was roughly four to five hours. Um, so it explains uh, all the things that he did to make this work. And this is just way above my head. <laughs> I don't really understand what's happening here, but I think it's uh, really wonderful what Vito Plantamura has done. So originally it was working with Stable Diffusion 1.5, so he made some changes to make it work with Stable Diffusion XL. So this is new to download the Stable Diffusion XL model, uh, you have to use git lfs. Um, so let's just say you can install git lfs uh, also like this. But I have already installed it, so nothing is happening here, but this didn't work for me. So this is at least one other way to install Git LFS. And after that, you can download the stable diffusion model file. So that's a bit over eight gigabytes. And I'm also We'll put a link to this article from Nick Build. It was originally written when there was only Stable Diffusion 1.5 support. Well, you can skip this part. And this is where it starts. So if you're on a Debian based Linux distro, you can just follow this. And you have to take into account that, uh, yeah, as soon as it says uh, things like change directory and it changes to a home directory that you need to change it into the username that you're actually using and also don't forget it to change it in places like this and yeah like change directory all the time and also when you start stable diffusion with the reference to the model file or you have to put the model file somewhere else 
but I will put a link to uh, both these websites in the description of the video. So with Stable Diffusion XL, there are some new parameters, so you can uh, point it to, uh, or you can tell it to use the XL model, and that also probably means that you have to make sure that you have the model path to the XL model file directory. And just in case, when you have some older ARM chips, like the Raspberry Pi 4, that's when you have to use this parameter. And if you're using something like a Raspberry Pi 0 2 or similar SBC, uh, you have to use this parameter RPI low mem. So for instance, this parameter RPI, that one also worked for my Banana Pi M2S. So don't be fooled by this parameter name, but it probably has more to do with the specific ARM core that you're using. So in my case, um, yeah, you can see I have installed both the Stable Diffusion 1.5 model file in one directory and the XL model file in another. And Vito Plantamura, he usually generates an image of a astronaut riding a horse on Mars. And this looks, well, quite convincing in my opinion. Well, of course you can argue that these legs perhaps uh, look a bit funny, but I mean, for generating these kind of images with a single board computer, that's I think still quite impressive. But like I said, what I noticed is that uh, when I tried the same prompt, oops, uh, there's hardly any colors. So you can see with this American flag that you can see some colors, but I don't, now I was really able to figure really out what was happening. Um, for instance, like a chameleon in a tree, uh, then there are, let's just say, a limited amount of colors. It's primarily green, white, brownish, and that's about it. Um, so I wasn't really able to figure out what was happening. Uh, I also tried to play around with the prompts. So I added colorful to the positive prompt. Um, but as you can see, the background really has very few colors, or at least the, the biggest part of the background now is just mostly white. And the horse itself also becomes colorful, but that was not my intention. Um, what I also noticed is that uh, if you put grayscale to the negative prompt, then it started to look a bit more like the pictures from Vito Plantamura. And one of the things that I noticed is that if you start adding a negative prompt uh, and you want to have these default ugly and blurry negative prompts, that you have to add them as soon as you start adding an explicit negative prompt. So that's still not how I really want it. Um, but I guess you can yeah, try to put some more information in the positive and the negative prompt and try to get a better result. Um, for instance, this one was also without the grayscale in the negative prompt, but I set like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And probably it understood that with a rainbow you have to be colorful. So, yeah. Uh, but I guess that 
it has the tendency to try to minimize the amount of colors. And for instance, when I tried a car in a city, you can see that it's mostly just grayscale. This one was without the grayscale in a negative prompt. But when I added grayscale to the negative prompt, um, it's not really colorful yet, but yeah, at least it picked something else than just black and white. Uh, but like I said, just try to play around with the both the positive prompt and the negative prompt. And one other thing is that I noticed that on some websites they say that if you uh, yeah, want to have an object that sometimes the object is duplicated. Uh, I've also seen that behavior sometimes, uh, but usually what happens is that the same kind of object is duplicated. So, because I've also tested with BreadOS, uh, one of the prompts that I test is a loaf of bread. And yeah, you have to believe me because I really just only did the positive prompt, a loaf of bread, and all of a sudden, Stable Diffusion just added a puppy on top of the bread. Um, so I don't know if any of you that have played around with Stable Diffusion has ever seen that it really added a yeah big object, let's put it like that, at least compared to the image, because this is like almost half of the image, that it puts what looks like a fairly random object in the picture that was not in the prompt. But on the other hand, this is a cute picture anyway. So I will also put a link to one of my videos where I explained in detail how to install Stable Diffusion. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that for Stable Diffusion XL, so you need to uh, download the Stable Diffusion XL model file with Git LFS. And also that you have to activate uh, Stable Diffusion XL with the parameters. Uh, and if you're running on something like a Raspberry Pi 4 or older, you can try with the RPI parameter or even with the RPI low mem. So that's all I have for today. Uh, yeah, I think from the, let's just say affordable single board computers that probably the Rockchip RK3588 is the best option at the moment. Um, I hope I'm going to get my Raspberry Pi 5 in like one or two weeks so I can do some tests with that one. And But if you only have like a Raspberry Pi 4 or something similar, it's still possible, but it will take like four or five hours. And on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, according to the author, even something like 11 hours. So that's all for now. And I hope to see you again in my next video.